Hello and welcome to Below Average Gaming. I'm your host, the Below Average Gamer. Today we're doing the Below Average Update. I just went and saw uh, Captain America Civil War yesterday. I went to the 7 o'clock showing here in my town. So I was one of the first people to see it. Really excited. I always love going and seeing the movies um, on opening night. Just that atmosphere that you get in the theater. People cheering, people clapping, people laughing whenever there's a joke. It just really brings the movie to life for me. Um, when you have a group of people who are all like-minded, all just wanting to be there and cheer and be happy for what's happening. I got to see my first person ever kicked out of a theater. That was pretty great when a dude was just screaming, Team Cap, Team Cap, Team Cap, during the first half of the movie. And the second half of the movie was screaming, Oh, burn on you, Iron Man! And was immediately dejected from the theater. That was my favorite part of the movie um, experience. Other, uh, my, other than the movie, that was my favorite part of the theater experience um, last night. But yeah, you know, great movie. Fantastic. I just want to do a little bit talking about it. Um... This video is heavy with spoilers, um, so please, if you haven't seen the movie, or if, if you're someone who, who's, uh, well, just if you haven't seen the movie, just uh, don't watch this video, please. Uh, this is one of the only times I'm going to tell you, do not watch my video. If you have seen the movie, um, watch this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're one of the people like me, who even if you haven't seen it, still wants to hear about what goes on in the movie and don't care about spoilers, watch it as well. Um, I know that there's people like me out there, so please let me know that I'm not crazy. But yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, just hop into it. Captain America Civil War, great movie, uh, fantastic. I was Team Iron Man the entire way. I will say the opening um, is kind of slow. Um, there's a little bit of like espionage and getting paperwork done and signed off and stuff like that just to get everything set up. Um, it's a little bit to follow, so you have to pay kind of close attention to some of the paperwork going across. But it is a uh, great movie. The action, it's, it's action-packed, I should say. Um, the, the whole part, it opens up with the crossbones scene, which was what I thought might happen. Is crossbones, we see all the footage, we see all the pictures and things. He's not a huge part of the movie, he's just kind of a, uh, well, what he does is kind of a huge part. But, uh, what he does is he's just a mercenary at the beginning that you're fighting, and he's that big, you did this to me, character, even putting that line like, this is for dropping a building on my face, to, um, Captain America as they're fighting, and it's like, clearly this whole, like, there's been this rivalry for a long time. They make conversation like, oh yeah, because you know, every time he sees us, he tries to kill us. And he, he actually really hates us type mentality between um, Cap and Falcon. So yeah, he's clearly a character that they've been after for a while. He uh, triggers, I won't say how, but he does trigger an explosion that kind of puts the world on the map as saying like, man, you know, we got to keep an eye on the Avengers, kind of get them in check, things like that. Uh, General Thunderbolt Ross makes an appearance as we all know. Um, he's actually a, a huge part of the movie. I thought that he was just going to be like, Hello, I'm Thunderbolt Ross. To be here just to show you that those Hulk movies that we all pretended didn't exist actually do exist in this universe. So yeah, we're going to rem remember that that happened, please. Uh, Edward Norton. Yeah, he looks a little bit different. Looks a little bit more like Mark Ruffalo now. But he's the same Hulk. So really glad that he was there. That um, he tied the whole thing together. He was a big part of the movie and getting them like pushing for the chords. Have a little bit of romance uh, in there. It's, it's, it's not as much forced romance as it was with the uh, Black Widow Hulk romantic storyline. It's actually a really good romance uh, that's going. Because in this one, uh, it, it's between Vision and Scarlet Witch. Which, if you haven't read the comics, that's a big point in the comics. Is that Scarlet Witch and Vision have this thing going on. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's really there. Like, the entire theater was doing the ooh all the entire time that they were on screen together. So, yeah. It's really good. I like it, too, because it's very different <coughs> than the other romantic interests in other Marvel movies is that in this one Scarlet Witch is basically like in control she's kind of Vision likes her and he doesn't understand that because he's a robot he doesn't know why he likes her or what he finds attractive about her but he just understands that he's attracted to her for some reason and she's kind of just like hey what happens you know it happens I'm hot so that then you know guys flock to me so yeah, there's that whole romantic situation which I really enjoyed because it, it was very different than the whole like damsel in distress type character. I'm the superhero and you're just the really smart girlfriend type thing. Um, speaking of relationships, there's also the whole thing between Tony Stark and Pepper Potts. We get to see a lot more emotion from Tony Stark in this in this movie um, on a lot of fronts. We get to see more of the relationship between his dad and he, um, him, between him and his dad, whichever one of those is correct. You see a lot more relationship of that and how um, broken he is because of that. It even opens up like the first scene where we see Iron Man is him in a holographic projection of his own memories talking to his father for the last time before his father dies. Um, and that's a, a huge, huge part of the movie is is that uh, the Winter Soldier is actually a part of 
Tony Stark's parents' death, and that's what makes this whole thing kind of shift. But yeah, so there's that. Also, um, again, I said spoilers at the beginning. Spoilers again. I'm just going to keep on saying spoilers throughout this video so that people understand. This is full of spoilers. Huge, huge, huge spoilers. Huge, fantastically huge spoilers. Um, yeah, um, Iron Man, Tony Stark has actually lost Pepper Potts. Not in depth, but they're just kind of, they've broken up due to a lot of stuff. He even talks about, because there's always been these questions like, I thought he destroyed all the suits in Iron Man 3 to show that he loved her, and then in Avengers he has a billion of them, so what's going on? Actually, what he, he ends up saying to Captain America is that he doesn't have Pepper Potts anymore because he, uh, because of that whole thing. Because he says, oh yeah, you know, I destroyed all my suits to prove that I loved her, but I had to build more after the whole Ultron thing and everything, da 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 Trying to save the world, building more suits. And uh, she left just because of everything that happened. Like, it was so crazy. And he couldn't stop building suits. Like, he, and he talks about how in Iron Man 3, he told her that he would stop building suits because he loved her, but he honestly just could not do it. He had to keep building suits. Something in him was making him build these suits. Um, so she kind of just left. <clears throat> and that has torn him in half. And he, he talks about how signing the Accords um, of making all the superheroes uh, work for the government, he thinks he can try to fix that. He thinks that if he can make this an actual job, make this something that's like strict and solid, he can fix that and hopefully uh, win her back. That's his agenda with that whole thing. So he does kind of have his own agenda on it, of just getting Pepper Potts back. We also have Black Panther, who shows up in the movie, who turns out to be, again, one of the best parts of the movie. Crazy character. I am so, he got me so pumped for the Black Panther movie coming out. Like, you have no idea. Like, just all the epic fight scenes between him, like bullets just ricocheting off him because he has that vibranium suit. Um, stay for the post credit scene. I don't know why, or I don't know who these people were who were just standing up. Like, I'd say 30% of the theater got up and left as soon as the movie was over. And I'm like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Don't you know? Don't you understand? And then the, the post credit scene shows them in Wakanda um, at Black Panther's mansion as he's a king now so it shows him at the mansion shows the giant panther sculpture that overlooks the city but yeah it's really really cool i am so pumped for a black panther movie so pumped um general uh, not general uh, uh burn zemo fantastic villain um he was you know he was really creepy and he like clearly had a big plan going on but i didn't really understand the character that was the whole thing is he was really a vague character like, his whole thing was like, I want them to fight each other. I want them to kill each other. That's it. That's all. But like, oh yeah, you know, I have my wife and my kid, and they died in Sokovia. And now I want, um, I want the Avengers to kill each other, because they got to walk away, and no one else got to walk away like they did. So, he's just kind of upset about that, kind of getting everything done. There's apparently other Winter Soldiers, which I was preparing for this huge fight scene with the other Winter Soldiers. Apparently there's five more. Um... And we never get that. It's actually kind of like stolen from us. Like we're like, oh, we're gonna be in the fight with the Winter Soldiers. All the Avengers against a Winter Soldier army. It's gonna be amazing. And we never get that. Like we never. Ooh, it's it's kind of disappointing that we don't get that. Um, but other than that, like it was great to the storyline. Like it really built in that character of uh, Baron. I keep forgetting that word, Baron Zemo. Um, he it kind of solidifies that character as someone who does not care for good or evil. He just wants the Avengers gone. That's what he wants. He didn't wear the mask. I was kind of disappointed they didn't make any reference to the Baron Zemo, like, purple mask thing. Or, like, him being... Like, they didn't even make him a Baron, or a Count, or a General, or anything. I think that he was just Zemo. Like, that's all they called him was Zemo. So, it was kind of interesting, um, having that character transform in that way. We got to see Falcon be completely awesome, which I was looking forward to. If you watched my other video before I watched the movie, um, I was hoping that Falcon would actually get some more screen time. And that says, uh... Rhodey would too. They both are huge parts of the movie. Both Falcon and uh, Rhodey, or um, War Machine, are huge parts of the movie that I love, that I adore. One of the things that I really appreciate about this movie is when they introduce Spider-Man and they introduce um, Ant-Man, they, they, they fix this problem that DC has a lot. That DC and all their movies, they feel the need to over uh, to over explain these characters when they introduce them. Here's this character. Here's everything about them that you will ever need to know. And now let's get on with the movie. Thirty minutes later, with this one, they they introduce Ant Man. They don't even say that he's Ant Man. They don't show the suit or anything until it's time to fight. He just comes out and he's like, "Hello, I'm here to help fight." And it's like, "Oh, okay, that's great, fantastic. Here we go." And then they're, they're in suit, and it's like awesome because everyone knows who he is already. If you don't know who he is, then you're you're kind of missing the point. So yeah, it was really great to have those characters like just 
automatically in there. Even the scene with Spider-Man, huge spoilers for the best part of the movie is when um, Iron Man, not Iron Man, Tony Stark is meeting with Aunt May and he's actually like hitting on Aunt May and it's just really awkward. Um, they're about the same age. Like in this one, Aunt May's a little younger because Peter is like 15. He even talks about like, I don't even have a license yet. I can't go out of town. I can't go do all this stuff. I can't quit school. But um, Tony Stark pretty much butts into his life and is like, yeah, you know, we got this grant for you. Ha ha ha. Can I just talk to you in private so that we can kind of get something settled? And Aunt May's like, oh my gosh, it's Tony Stark. Yeah, go talk to my to my nephew. And so they go and um, they're talking in the room and basically Tony Stark shows him images on his hologram phone. Like, look at this spider guy. Isn't this amazing? Spider boy? Spider boy just swinging around, fighting, helping people. Isn't that crazy? And then he hits like a button and the suit drops out from the ceiling. And uh, there's this really awesome joke. That he's like, so what do you call yourself, spider guy? Spider Boy, Spider Child, because you're 15, and <laughs> it's this, they're really just ashamed Peter Parker, like, Spider Man. And that they show, like, the, the old, like, he had goggles, like the ones that I always showed you in a different update, in, like, the uh, below average extras. The goggles, kind of like that, they're, like, out, and he has, like, just a red hoodie with a red face mask on. And he says, You're just swinging around in your underwear, is that what you're doing? And he's like, No, it's, it's this whole thing. And they had this opportunity, and I was so, um, devastated they were gonna do it and they didn't do it they saved themselves from doing it where they're like so how'd you get your powers and he just i was like are they going to explain the entire plot of spider-man one right now and he just goes oh you know it's a long story and i was like thank you fantastic great because everyone knows who spider-man is everyone knows the origin everyone knows why he does what he does so thank you for not spending an hour and a half uh, just playing spider-man the movie i was so excited about that plus him being 15 at first i was like you know whatever it, eh, fantastic perfect I get him coming home from school and a lot of the issues, like the problems that he would face as a kid, are great. Like, it's like, oh, I see you have a computer here from 1976. And he's like, oh yeah, I got it from the dumpster. I don't have a m any money, I don't have a job. Um, yeah. So, he's just kind of a kid and he even says like, I can't go to, to Germany to help fight you, help fight with you. He says, why not? He says, because I have homework. I have homework, I have a driving test, I have my aunt, I have all this stuff. And it's like, oh, right, you're just a kid. Oh my gosh, you're like 15, aren't you? So, yeah, really cool. Um, the whole time that he's getting smacked around in the fight scenes, that was my thought the entire time. It's, he's only 15 years old. Don't do this to him. He's only a boy. But <laughs> it, was, it was great. He stole the show, all the fighting, all the talking. He really, they make him this character who's just a huge fan of Tony Stark and Iron Man. And the whole time, he's like, so what should I do now, Iron Man? He's like, just fight. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Just fight. Okay, but like, how should I go about doing that? What should I do? I don't want to get in trouble or anything. And he talks about like, oh yeah, you know, I, Iron Man made me this whole cool suit and everything. Really excited to be here, to be fighting. Just really glad to be a part of the team. He's, he's the real, like, real deal cartoon Spider-Man that we've all been wanting for so long. All they had to do was tone him down to 15. And it was the best thing ever. Tom Holland did a great job as Spider-Man. I so much want to see him in a new, in a new Spider-Man series. Like, I, all these movies got me so pumped for everything coming out. Like, it's great. Um, we find out that Scarlet Witch can actually control the mind gem. She can control the gems which is going to be amazing when Thanos comes. Like, finally, we have something that it's like, okay, we might have a leg up on Thanos here. Like, we have this big, giant, demon god monster thing with all this power. We might actually have something to combat that now with Scarlet Witch. It's really cool, really great. Um, There's a scene, again, spoilers, where they're all kind of locked in prison, which is one of my favorites, where they're locked in a superhero prison. And basically, uh, it's funny when you look at all of them, they're like, no, we're gonna get out of here, da da da, ha, ha, I gotta get revenge. And Ant-Man, uh, who's, who's uh, Scott Lang, who's been in prison for years, is just like, hey, you know, whatever. It's prison, this is what happens. And even the point is just, he's the same character, they pretty much got all of the humor from Ant-Man 1, crammed it into like five lines and put it there. We get to see Giant Man, which was amazing to see in theaters. You should have heard the theater erupting with joy and cheers as he said, is, is a great line, he says, I'm going to try something, um, you say we need a big distraction, I'm going to try something, if I tear myself in half, just keep running, don't worry about me. Like, tear myself in half. And everyone in the theater knew it was coming, and he just turned huge and grabbed War Machine out of the air and pulled him to the ground, and it was fantastic. It was amazing. I could not believe all of the cool stuff that happened with him as Giant Man. Make more references to Spider-Man being 15 years old um, and not really understanding like, oh yeah, this is a common trope in movies to fight a giant bad guy, right? He's like, oh yeah, you guys ever see that really old movie, uh, Star Wars? And it's like, oh, how old is this kid? Like, honestly, what's up with what's going on here? But they were fantastic. Ant-Man, Spider-Man stole the show. Really great. I, I could not believe how funny that Bucky and Falcon were 
um, throughout the entire movie with just this whole I hate you so much relationship of like, oh, they're friends, but they hate each other. Like, it was great. Fantastic. I've, I've said great and fantastic. I've said amazing a thousand times each, but that just does that just goes to prove how great this movie was. Again, it's really slow at the beginning. It does have this like double arch of storyline, um, but I think it works really well. You have that big fight in the middle, and that's just the first fight of like a second thing. There is no to be continued. That was my big fear. My big fear was we were going to get into the movie, get to a point of like, well, I guess we're gonna have to kill each other, aren't we? To be continued. But it never happened. It was it was a complete movie on its own that gets me pumped for the other movies coming out that are going to be spin-offs of those characters. I cannot tell you <clears throat> how excited I am for these other movies, all because of Captain America: Civil War. I also hear that um, Iron Man or not Iron, you know, Robert Downey Jr. has signed on to do an Iron Man four. Don't know how I feel about that. Three was a little bit of a push. Um, I think three was a good way to end everything, but four is going to be four should be good. I don't. I, there's not an Iron Man that I didn't like. I know that people had issues with number two. But um, I thought it was okay. I, I There wasn't an Iron Man that I didn't like. Um, Captain America actually was the one... Captain America 1 and 2 were the only ones that I was like, you know, I don't really care for these Marvel movies. I might kind of skip out on these. But after seeing number 3, it really uh, it, re it really made me want to go back and watch the others. Because it, it, it changed that whole aspect for me. Because in the first two, it was a lot of spy. Like, especially the second one. It's in Winter Soldier. It's a lot more espionage. A lot more like secrecy, documents, paperwork. And it was like, you know, I don't... I don't care for all that. I want to see the action. I want to see them fight. I want to see my comic book heroes come to life fighting like they were meant to. So, uh, yeah, this one it delivers on everything that I've wanted for that. Everything. You know, there's that relationship between Scarlet Witch and Vision, which brings a little bit more humanity to some of the characters that we thought might get left behind. Um, Hawkeye comes out of nowhere. Um, he's even a, a, a more well-rounded out character, like coming in with it, like understanding he has a family now. This whole thing of like risk that he has throughout the movie. And then, um, Iron Man, like I said, I love the character. I feel a deep connection to the character. I don't know why, but I love him. He's fantastic. Iron Man um, and Tony Stark. And in this movie, we get to see a side of Tony Stark that we've never seen before. A truly torn apart Tony Stark, who's not only torn because of what happened with his family, um, about losing Pepper, um, but also upon finding out that the Winter Soldier is the one who killed his parents, who basically ruined his life. Um, like, yeah, it made him who he is today, it made him super successful, all these things, but at the same time, like, he lost his family due to this character that Captain America has been trying to save this entire time. And it's like, it's almost like this entire movie has been a lie to him. Like, everything that's happened has been a lie. A even back up to, like, Avengers 1, it's like everything that like, Captain America and Iron Man had as a relationship, as friends, as everything, it has been a lie up to that point and it's like the one thing that he's like I can't believe you did this to me Cap like I helped you I fought beside you all these things for you but in the end you were still willing to help the person the murderer instead of me and it's like wow man I mean every time that Robert Downey Jr's character starts to kind of lose it like we haven't seen him lose it before whether it be in anger or in sorrow or just weeping you know you feel it in the audience this is a character that we've watched through one two three four what, five movies? Five, six, this is his sixth movie? Yeah, this is his sixth movie that we've seen him as a character and we become attached, we know the character, we love him, and, you know, you see him broken so much. Like, it's just, it was too much, like, it was too much for a lot of people in the audience. You could tell, like, you could feel the energy in there. Um, I suggest that you go see it as soon as possible because I really want you to be able to get that experience of being in the theater with people who are there for the movie. Who aren't there because they feel like they have to see it, but are there because they want to see the movie. They want to see their characters portrayed in the most proper and excellent way. But yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I might do another one. Um, like I said, I'm really excited. I, I loved every single character in the movie. Oh my gosh, I loved every single character. There wasn't a single character that I was that I thought they could do without. I felt differently in Avengers. I was like, you know, this whole relationship here, you could do without that whole thing, you know, you don't really need. I, there wasn't a single part of this movie that I thought that they could have cut out. I loved even the smallest part of just like Crossbones and seeing the evolution of a character who, who was once Captain's best friend or one of Captain's best friends, just that minor character. And even seeing Scarlet Witch go from people fear me to people respect me to am i a hero am i a villain that whole mental fight that she has the whole thing of like vengeance and the themes that go along with that throughout the entire movie connecting back to black panther everything you know it's fantastic and uh you know one of the things that i noticed in the movie i haven't heard anyone talk about yet is spider-man's logo on his chest that is um not a reimagined spider-man logo that's the future foundation spider-man logo that he has there complete with like the hexagon 
on his chest. Um, so I'm curious if that means anything. Because the Future Foundation is a part of the Fantastic Four universe. It actually is the Fantastic Four, plus Spider-Man and others, and like their kids and stuff. So I'm curious if that's going to have any play on that, because his, his costume is the Future Foundation costume, which I believe Tony Stark actually helped found the Future Foundation. I, I believe, or he had a, a big part in it. So yeah, um, we'll go ahead and see how that turns out. But thank you for watching the Below Average Update. Go ahead and watch the movie if you haven't seen it. If you have seen the movie, let me know in the comments below what you think um, in any aspect. Whether you think what's going to happen in the next movie, what you think is going to happen due to this stuff, what you think they're going to do in like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that, other spin-offs. Let me know. I'm really excited to see what you have to say. So thank you for watching. You the best. I appreciate you. And bye!